Well, hello and welcome back, or welcome to those of you tuning in for the first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday with episodes of Hope, Help, and Health. You can expect guests that give us great information and insight in the world of business, health, and personal experience, all presented to you as a way to find a Hope Revealed. As a person myself who's been battling stage 4 cancer, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring hope as well as help. And that can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to locate, and information from emails and messages I receive from you, our followers. You can always email us here at community at godsgotthis.love for questions, comments, or content. On today's episode, we're going to dive deep into life and a hope-revealed moment through the life of a very special guest. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Rob House, and that's what they called me. That's the name I was given, Rob House. But I look at myself as an empowerment artist. You know, empowerment artist, because my, my vision and mission in life is really just to empower people. And empowerment is essentially, people all have the power within them to do whatever they want and need to do. Sometimes it's just hard to find it. So when you can help inspire them and motivate them to empower them, they can then become become everything they want to be. So that's what I do, man. That's what I do. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. And I'm super excited to have my friend Rob here today and to be able to share with you some of the things about his life and also how he's able to choose awesome things like uh, red t-shirts and red glasses that he didn't even plan on doing at the same time. <laughs> Look at the guy. He's coordinated. How you doing, Rob? Man, I'm doing fantastic, Matt. Thanks for that uh, fantastic introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're not the watching man today, you have to, you have to watch the, the video. You'll see. <laughs> Man, so Rob, we've known each other for about a year now or so on LinkedIn, and um, it's been, I'm grateful for, for the opportunity, the connection of LinkedIn, and then uh, just to know you as well, and to be able to watch some of the things you've been able to do in your life, and of course, in the lives of other people over the past year or so. And you've, uh, you've been able to do a lot of different things, and we'll kind of get into where you're at now as a humanologist and kind of explain what that word means, right, and, and let yeah. some folks know, but prior to, uh, to where you're at now, uh, you were um, doing some other stuff, and then you came. You come to LinkedIn. I mean, what was, what was that world like for you? Were you just doing like a sales job, nine to five kind of thing? You said, "I want to go start my own career," and jumped into LinkedIn. What's how does that work? No, so I've been on LinkedIn probably since uh, for a long time. You know, ten years at least. But you know, I was on LinkedIn. I was like one of those houses. You know, it was there, but nobody was in it. You know, that's how that's my LinkedIn profile was. Me too. But LinkedIn. You know, but then LinkedIn, when they wanted to go ahead and bring video in, which completely transformed it by what? Allowing us to do this kind of engagement, you know, or at least visual engagement, which in heightened the engagement. So, you know, before that, occupationally, though, I've always been an entrepreneur. I don't think I'm, I'm the worst employee. Okay. <laughs> All right. Top five worst employees in the world. I know it and I'm okay with it. You know, and the reason for that is because I'm always thinking about what can be done. How can we evolve? And when you're an employee, a lot of times you're supposed to just be where you're supposed to be. So that never works. So, you know, I've always been doing that. But, you know, for the last 20 years, um, studying the mind, body, and spirit has been what my quest has been. When I say studying, I mean, uh, so I've practiced as a personal trainer. I uh, got my certification a couple of years, a couple of decades ago. Uh, I don't think that's a very long time. Um, I, I, uh, was a pastor for a decade. And when I say a pastor, I mean, so like traveled around and spoke at different congregations and mainly, mainly to youth. Cause I just love the youth, youth empowerment. Like that's my, my passion. Um, and like, that was the greatest experience of learning was those 10 years. Cause I was able to grow in theology and my understanding, but also grow in my networking and growing business inside of that. And just growing as a person. Um, and then I've also studied psychology and, Neuroscience, and the reason I studied started studying psychology because um, I wanted to understand what this medicine was that the doctors were giving me, and what they knew about me that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so I said, "Okay, I mean, that's not going to happen. You know more about me than I know." So, you know, that actually excited me. And when you're excited, learning your learning curve is not cut in half; but it's like a third. Like you got like down to a. I'm not a mathematician, but like you got four quarters, take three away. All right, that's how short the learning curve is. And so I've been doing that, 
But in regards to my to to, to LinkedIn and that, uh, what happened on this place is I got a chance to meet over the last two years. I got a chance to meet the most extraordinary people, and so my growth. I've grown faster. You know, that's basically what it boils down to. You know, right, you right. surround yourself with, you know, people who are doing great things and saying great things. You just become greater if you're paying attention. You know? Well, so that's now, the key. What you I just am. said, if, if you're paying attention. So I, I totally agree. And, you know, uh, we, we do we do the same thing just with a different story. We both have our own things, but we, we, we're both reaching people. And it's mm -hmm. so fun to do that. But when you're only there just to to uh to output with zero input and that input doesn't give any output uh mm -hmm. then it's a waste of time it's uh, yeah. it's very very selfish very self-seeking and very uh n you know not authentic obviously yeah yeah and for you what you're saying obviously from what i'm hearing is that you've had an opportunity to engage with people uh, uh, even th through their content now through the power of video on LinkedIn, I believe as well. That's been a long time coming, which I don't mm -hmm. understand why a company owned by Microsoft has some of these little slow issues, yeah. but yeah, uh, that's, that's for another podcast show, but yeah, no, uh, right, right. Oh boy, I can go on for that one for a while. But anyway, <laughs> it's fantastic that we have the opportunity to do these kind of things because now we get a chance to learn from some folks and from, from, from some folks that, that never did anything like this before. There's a lot of folks mm -hmm. on LinkedIn that are doing video. It blows my mind, but for the first time. For the first time. I didn't yeah. think that was possible. It's unbelievable to me. About I was like, wow, that blew my paradigm wide open because <laughs> people you know, are I'm scared. Some people are actually scared yeah. to do yeah. this. And I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not down on them. If you're watching, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be. It's so easy. It's just like what we're doing right now. We're just mm -hmm. talking. It's that yeah. it's just simple. Just talk to you to your friends. Fun. Right? Yes, yeah, fun. It becomes fun. It does. Dude, it's so fun. Like, you could be like Abraham Lincoln or something. Like, you can be whoever <laughs> yeah. you want to be. Whatever you want. <laughs> so, so, Rob, obviously, if anybody follows Rob, you know he does this Abraham Lincoln thing. And uh, it's on Fridays. I think you do it, right? Is that what it is? Friday. So, no, no Freestyle Friday. Honest oh, that's Abe right. Freestyle just, Friday. Yeah. But you do like freestyle Abraham Friday. Lincoln another time. Yeah, Honest Abe was just like, you know, it was sporadic. That, <laughs> yeah, that, you that's, did, that's you a, did a series with Abraham thing. You did it for... Uh, I think a week at, at straight at one point for something you did a little series with him. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, which was funny. And then you did. Uh, I I'm snooping around a little bit because I try to to know my friends and hope that they would do the same for me. But uh, I think you did a video on your about section where you got interviewed by Abraham Lincoln for your. Basically, it was just you trying to to promote yourself to folks to know how they they can hire you for for a job. That was or, yeah. that was it, man. That that was it. I figured you know I did Honest Abe for about three months up to that point and had built a pretty good following there and said, yeah, I like this show. And so I said, okay, what I'll do is I have Honest Abe interview me because I was looking for an opportunity. And so my virtual, that became my virtual resume. And I put it up and I got a job offer in six hours. Really? Man, that's my job now. And it is the most exciting, when you talk about humology, I mean, come on, law of attraction. I don't know how the heck, God does some amazing things, but the way this came together is like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's like, whoa, like, okay, what? Okay, so you just brought up something. <laughs> okay, so you you just brought up something that was pretty interesting, kind of a kind of a can of worms in some cases. But you just brought up the the words law of attraction, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I've read deeply into the law of attraction. I think there's some fantastic things there. I mean, uh, I mean, I'll, I won't. I'm not shy to admit that I'm a follower of Christ, and and there are some things in in the law of attraction that doesn't lend itself to what I believe as a follower of Jesus. Um, however, mm -hmm. there are mm -hmm. some, there are some fantastic principles uh, yeah. that are available in the law of attraction that are without a doubt helpful in our lives. Right. I mean, there's, there's yes. always, you can find good in anything. So, so how does that work for you when you just said the law of attraction, humanology? Yeah. I mean, what's humanology? Come on, man. Folks are like, what human, human, what humanology? What's that? Yeah. Mean? Yeah, man. So humans and technology combined in one. Is you that know, like a cyborg so, or something you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, right, robots, right. what's that? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's, really, it's really our mindset you, with the access of technology. So how humans interact and how humans use technology is humology. And we technology is just really a, a scientific way of like how we're doing things. It's, that's basically what it is. And so if you have, you know, technology can be uh, something like a lever, you know, that's, that's technology. It's just a way to do something, you know. And so now we have advancing our technology now we, we do this with 
digital aspects. So it's the digital aspects, it's any automation aspects, it's humans and any technological aspect. That's humology. Wow, that's pretty fun, bro. I mean, does that uh, was that word around prior, or is that something you kind of put together? Yes, because I, I googled it and looked it up, and I was looking. And I was okay, and so I looked it up, and people have been talking about it. You know, there's really? you know, it's about maybe you know a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand people that have been saying this word. You know, or no, not that many, maybe a couple hundred, not even, but it's enough people. But it's like it's like an article here. It's, it's just like it's not, it's not really push. It's just like this is that. This is that. I'm like, yo, this is this. And we need to understand technology, humans, because it's our ability to understand technology which allows us to advance humanity. And that's why I tell the story about Henry Ford and, and his, the automation process and how that literally basically gave birth to the middle class. It basically changed the world. Yeah, and absolutely. And so, you know, it's, it's up to us to take technology to the next level because that's how we evolve as people and that's how the planet evolves. No, that's so good. Yeah, the whole Henry Ford thing is a big deal, too. I, uh, we could talk about that for a whole show, too. There's so many nuggets in what he did there. And, uh, man, you just think about it. Yeah. It's like in, in the aspect of our own lives, if we think about Henry Ford, it's like what he did seems so obvious that mm -hmm. it should have been done, should have been going already. Like, it's just like, yeah. like why, why wouldn't that happen? It makes sense, right? Yeah. Of course, it makes sense now. But what about those moments that we have right now in our own lives that's mm -hmm. like a Henry Ford moment that hasn't occurred, but should have occurred. And finally, somebody can be that person to yeah. do that, right? So yeah. I think some of what you're doing with the uh, humanology and your videos and content that you have here on LinkedIn, you share uh, with other uh, social media platforms is, is an opportunity to, to engage with that and to be able to turn up the heat on people's inspiration and ideas and thought processes, right? So is that what you kind of do with humanology is kind of give people insight and and inspiration of the things that might spur something in their own lives to do that themselves yeah absolutely because when you're entertained your guards down you know you, you go to movies you go hang out you're down you know that's why people go to, to have drinks or something and they're all loose you know that's the best time to engage and so you know i call it edutainment and so it's education and entertainment integrated and so with hum humology and really anything that i do it's really to get people, you know, relax, enjoy, laugh, smile, feel good. But there's going to be some insight in there. There's going to be some concepts in there, some seeds every time. There's a seed. There's always a seed and sometimes multiple seeds. And the seeds grow over time. Some grow quick, some grow slow, but they all have a chance to grow. All right. And so I'm just out here throwing seeds, man. <laughs> I'm a universal farmer. Yeah, man, that's fantastic. <laughs> you're a sower. You're, you're awesome, bro. Uh, you're really good at that. And uh, one of the things that I also admire about that in you is, uh, you know, a lot of times folks, uh, especially those that are that are married or in relationships, uh, can tend to be uh, really focused, which is good. But then sometimes that focus can turn into uh, self-centered, self-seeking, and you kind of blow other people to the curb. And that's not the case in your case. Uh, people have been able to watch, even on your Friday shows, you do uh, with your wife and y'all singing, doing something just around the house and goofing off or whatever. And you record mm -hmm. it, turn it into something, right? So it's so fun. And I've seen her other things that you've done. And you went to, did a, a, a youth event somewhere uh, this year. I forget where it was at, but you probably know what it was. But it was, I think Chris uh, Jackson came there. Yeah, yeah, the Kennedy Center. It was at the Kennedy Center. Yeah, yeah, you did something there yeah. too, right? Uh -huh. But your but yeah. your wife was there. I mean, to me, that's. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was cool you're doing my, everything, my, but there's my kids too. Yeah, oh, that's the most important amazing, thing to man. me. I amazing. thought it was like it was good you get to do that, but I was looking at playing, and there he is with his wife and his kids doing it with them and making a difference. That to me was more important than anything. I mean, it was great what you yeah. did. I'm not trying to take yeah. that away, but no, but I'm with you, that, brother. I'm feeling on that. I'm feeling on that. Oh, Absolutely. it's so good, and that yeah. that's something that could be more. What's what's wrong with with family? I mean. It's pretty good to show with people if we want to engage on, on LinkedIn. I mean, I guess some things about being professional and certain things are focused, but there's nothing wrong with incorporating your family once in a while. I mean, yeah, that's what it's all about, right? At the end of the day, yeah. like, I want me and my family to be able to do whatever. Want. Well, bring them on sometime. Show people how you love your family, right? That's the other side of humanology. Like, be human. Like, also, without even talking about computers, humans need to be human. And, like, and to be human, what that means is be you. Like the reason why people find it hard to be authentic because they're trying to be something that they're not they're trying to be something. And it's hard not to do that because you got models to follow. You got to have to follow models. 
But if you don't know yourself enough, you'll follow a model and you become, you be, you'll become that model. But then inside, you're, that's not you. So in, internally, you'll be having these battles you won't even know. But if you seek yourself and your meaning, spend time with yourself in quiet. Be okay with that. You know, see what you like and do the things that you like. You know, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. And before you know it, things will just start to unravel. Hmm. I know I got I started going just now, man. I, was, I think I went on a rabbit trail, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all it's all it's all relevant because we got to know we have to know who we are to be able to be effective. And when you're when you when you live without clarity, when you engage without clarity, when you just kind of wing it, uh, and there's times that that's okay. But when that yeah. is your normal, that's not okay, right? Not so okay. yeah, you know, you're, right. you're talking about really coming to 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 yourself and have a have a come to Jesus meeting with yourself, mm -hmm. basically, and say, all right, let's find out who I really am and let's get on with this thing. And yeah, and uh, and your wife supports you. She loves you. Uh, it's obvious, and uh, and it's great to see the love in your eyes, both of you, uh, when you talk with each other. And um, you know that that kind of leads me into something here that uh, we're talking about. Obviously, the show is called Hope Revealed. And it's uh, about moments that we could share with folks that, that maybe we had some some kind of thing happen in our lives, but then there was a hope because sometimes people don't understand fully how to engage mm -hmm. with hope or to be able to say that it's even for them, right? But I believe it's obviously for everyone. And you, we were talking a little bit before uh, on the show, since we're talking about you and your wife right now, that yeah. um, things haven't always been the way they are now. I mean, what, what was that like for you if you could uh, share that with us? Well, you know, we... Nicole and I have always had a really, really rich relationship. Meaning, like, we, whatever it is, we do it to the fullest, you know, and just with the, both opposite ends of the spectrum, you know, it's just, it's vibrant. Um, and that works as long as life is working. But when things are not working, and then you have that, then things stop not working as well when the relationship then becomes a domino effect. But, you know, it, it came to a point where, um, and this was recent, you know, uh, 2018, we had a breakthrough, a, a breakthrough to where uh, I literally was, um, I was uh, a pharmaceutical slave for 10 years. You know, when I say a pharmaceutical slave, I mean, in fact, a slave is somebody who's really held against their own will. You know what I mean? And I didn't know. So. Hmm. Doctor told doctor told me that I had the degenerative bone disease and I needed to take this thing called tramadol, which is, um, uh, uh, which is a. Uh, I know it well, antibiotic. brother. I know it well. Yeah, yes, sir. yeah. As, as, as opiate, as little little pieces above it in, um, mm -hmm. in that category, and then you know, then he said, uh, I have I have the degenerative bone disease in my knee and my back, and so you got to take this. And you're also going to need this thing called Flexrol for the, um, which is for. Uh, keep your muscles from that's from right. spazzing out. All right. And then you got this other thing, uh, which is like an ibuprofen and take that thing as well. So take these three things. And I was taking all these things and things and, and those things actually, you know, make me feel a certain way. And sometimes I take more of those things than I need to take, you know, because I like the way they feel. And then I'm going on that trail. Then I'm dealing with that mental battle. So then I got all these things that are happening. This is 10 years. Mm, that's a long time to go with that kind of crap, bro. That's for sure. 10 years. Yeah. The doctor told me and one day I'm sleeping and God wakes me up. It's like when Jacob was wrestling the angel. Literally, I'm laying in the bed on the couch. I'll, I'll go up in the air, come down on the couch and literally crack my knee. Basically cracks. It's swollen. Can't walk. It's like literally cracked the knee. Like Just literally like it was on the outside, not the bone. Um, it was swollen and I couldn't walk, man. I mean, I, I couldn't, what was weird is like I couldn't walk at first and then when I first got up and then five hours later, couldn't walk at all. It was completely swollen, completely. So this is a dream and this is on the couch. But in the dream, I got the vision of Jacob and I, I, and I felt what it was. God was slowing me down. Because at that point I was playing sports. I was doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that. When this happened, it shut everything down. It's the first time I'd ever been shut down. Like when I say shut down, I mean I shut everything down. The first time I think in my entire life I've ever shut everything down. And that's when everything happened. That's why meditation works, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you why. You got 70,000 thoughts a day. You know, think about 70,000 cars on the highway. That's your mind. Meditation clears all the cars. Mm hmm Good. Right? Right? And so God clear all the cars. 
And in that moment, I was thinking to myself, you know, like, what does your wife really think about you? Like, what does she really think about you? It's, it's, it's a good thing to reflect on. And that's when I came up with this fulfillment formula, you know, self-reflection, course correction, and humility. Like, self-reflect, course correct, and be, be, be humble. And so self-reflect, like, think about how you're showing up. Like, I know I think I'm showing up a certain way, but I wonder how people are actually perceiving me. Like, what is their opinion? Then, then to come to find out, you know, I, I thought I was knocking out of the park in our marriage. Like, out the park, yo, I'm barely getting on first base, baby. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I like how, like, well, I thought I was, no, nah, man, if you want to get further, why don't you, you know, why don't you take her on date night once a week? Mm. If you want to get go further, why don't you bring her flowers? Because that's what she enjoys. If you're interested in getting around the bases, then why don't you give her a car? Because that's her love language. And so I started doing those things. Next thing you know, she started doing things. Next thing you know, she then reveals some things that she's been holding for years. Mm. And the, by doing that, it allowed everything to flow. Before you knew it, our marriage, our life had gone to another level. And it all happened because we got honest. I got honest with myself. Self-reflect. Course correct. Make the, make, the, make the adjustments. Make the necessary changes. And be humble. I mean, mm -hmm. humble to me is like sitting low enough. You know, a lot of times we're, we're up here. You know, we're up here and, we just, and up here you miss everything. When you're low, think of yourself as a, as a rock. You know, a rock is on the ground. You know, you can see everything. Everything's you know, everything's up. You know, I, I like to look at it that way. I heard a monk say that. He said, "If you want to be humble, think yourself." I think he said a flake or something. Whatever he said, it was on the ground. Yeah, you ain't no I flake, bro. You ain't no flake. You're a rock. Yeah. I'll take a rock for a rock. rock for no flake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're a rock. <laughs> you're a rock. You're a rock. Oh, I want to be a gold rock. Okay. <laughs> you gold rock. You gold rock. Gold no rock gold flake. On the <laughs> <laughs> all right so okay, you're looking man. up you're looking up right that's what you're saying just a second yeah look it up man and just like you know and by looking up i if you look up and serve that's a, that's the posture of serving yes you know what i'm saying it's like ah and when you do that all of a sudden everything serves you it's really it's really weird i, I heard him said before like people do this for evil people can use it for good i heard him talk about this power you know of influence and you, this is a power. You want to have, you increase your impact when you increase your, you increase your income when you increase your impact. You increase your impact when you increase how much you give. Like, that's it. What can you give? Hmm. Yeah, and the, the key here is that you didn't do this so that, so that she would do that, right? It, like, you didn't t create more servant leadership things to say, well, if I do this and I do that, then she'll do this and do that. I mean, that's, that's manipulation. So what you're saying is you came to a place through humility mm -hmm. that was able to lower yourself to a place to where you could ultimately serve, in this case, your wife. Mm -hmm. and, and as you did that, as you served, um, she began to then in return serve you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty yeah. powerful. It's, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I, I got to watch that and like, and like, and actually be aware of it happening from the inception of the beginning of, like, wow, like this. So like, it works. I can talk to my people, like couples and, and people getting ready to be couples and like, yo, listen, this really works. Okay. Yeah, it does. You're right. <laughs> so right, bro. So right. Yeah. Wow. That's so amazing, bro. Especially in, in when we're talking about relationships with families and, and uh, a lot of the folks here on LinkedIn and, um, you know, I am, I enjoy it. It can be a weight sometimes, but I, I am bombarded with thousands of messages and emails and whatnot from people on LinkedIn, as I'm sure you are. Mm -hmm. And, um, I could honestly say in a, in a bulk of the ones minus the folks that just say they want a job in the United States of America, can you help me come to America? Besides those, <laughs> those ones, I would say that that doesn't happen on LinkedIn, right? Um, I could say <laughs> that there are a, a vast amount of people that send me messages and the underlying vibe, feeling, thought process, whatever is, I, uh, I just, I don't feel good. I feel lonely. I don't feel like I can do this. I feel like uh, I don't know where I'm going, right? All those kind of things. So I think it's pretty, and a lot of those type, a lot of those people aren't aren't necessarily saying that on their posts on LinkedIn. Yeah, right. It's like, hi, how you doing? And then, oh. yeah, yeah. 
Right? Yeah. I'll, I'll be transparent. There's a lot of times like that in my own life. I come on LinkedIn and I've got my church face on and I do my thing mm-hmm. and I turn it off. Yeah. Do Social math. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happens. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I try not yeah. to do it. I know, I know how to get out of it. Sometimes I choose not to, if I want to be, you know, a pity party for Matt, if I want to, you know, can do it. Anyway. Right. Um, right, right. So how, how are you able to, in that in thought process, how are you able to overcome? I'm a guy just like you. So how are you? I think we both, yeah, we're both guys got beards and stuff. I mean, you got a starter <laughs> kit going on there, but you know, that's, <laughs> when, you fully hit, when you fully hit puberty, you'll be able to have something. Like <laughs> uh, it's not easy to, to, uh, to be a rock, bro. It's not easy to lay down everything you want, all your hopes, your ambitions, your dreams, all the stuff that's like fire in your bones. And then to say, I'm going to stop it all because all I want to do is just serve. And ultimately in this case, your wife, Mm -hmm. that's not easy to just turn it off and do that. Right. I mean, how are you able, how are you able to kind of do that? Yeah, that's that's great, man. You know what? It it really depends on the person too, because it it depends on what the, what that state, you know what I mean? Like for one person, it may not be easy because it doesn't really matter to them. But for another person, it's, it, it, it's really easy for them because this really matters. And so, like, I'm able to future pace. And so I, I've always had that. That's one of, uh, future you know, pace? Has, is that what you just said? Yeah. Yeah, future okay. pace. That's awesome. You know? That'll and be so on the video. Y'all be seeing that word that popped up back then. I already <laughs> edited this. That's pretty cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> back, back that way or this way. Which way <laughs> future pace. All right. Yeah, man. And, and so and I'm, I'm able to see, like, okay, that I can see you these actions, you know, these are the possibilities of that, of this behavior. And so that, the future pace of that was me living in a different house than my children. Oh, heck no. Yeah. Yeah. Me, the future pace of that was some other man sharing moments with my wife. Not mm-hmm. even, I'm not even, I didn't even want to finish that conversation. I only did it because I had to give you the literature. Yeah. So, so these things were number one to me. So, I'm a man of God. So I went to God and like, look, Moses got a burning bush. He split the sea. People got stuff, manna from the sky, with all these things happening. I'm your servant. I'm here and I'm listening. You know, I know people came and talked and they got it. So I want to know what path I need to take to be in the position they were in so I, we can have that same situation. You know, he made me do, he made me shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop talking. For like oh, that's not easy. Almost. It's not easy, especially for guys like you and me. We're extroverts oh. that go 100 miles, 125 miles an hour. Oh, I get it, man. Yeah, and finally, to the quiet, I got it. It sunk in. Mm. How long did that take, bro? A day, a week, a month? I mean, it was gradual. Yeah, you know. Gradual, get growing, 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 and growing, you know, and and now it's just it's growing faster and faster and faster. And is that now just you know, a? Uh, has it become a natural flow in your life now that you don't have to to work to make it happen like that? Are you, are you able to have that that in your life, you and your wife, consistently now, or is that something yeah. you still have to 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 work on? Something you have to to maintain? Yeah, it's it, it's definitely always the yellow tape is up always under construction. I always say that. Always under construction because as soon as you stop building, as soon as you stop building, you start falling. All right, so we got we keep building, me and pouring to each other, getting better. Well, my, we have the, we got this vision of the triangle. My wife and I, but she she got it from somewhere. I forgot what she got. It. I I tell her it's hers because she introduced it to us. You think of the triangle, and she's on one end, I'm on the other end. And gosh, at the top of the triangle, we're both going up the triangle, and as long as we're both focused going towards God we'll always meet at the top and we'll always, and we keep doing that. We'll meet. And when we do meet, we'll meet with God. You know, that's our union. And so that's our mindset, you know, and then, you know, you got, you got stuff that happens. You got real life that happens, but when you're rooted, you don't just get, you don't just fly away with every season, every winter. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We're rooted. We're not going anywhere. We, we no, got that's this. Fantastic. And that's, yeah. like you said, it's mindset. And a lot of people understand that word. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you brought up a lot of things, obviously, with Moses and, and the burning bush. And you brought up Jacob for, for folks that don't know who Jacob is in the Bible. I mean, it's a guy who who uh, basically got to a point in his life where he said, look, I'm this is it, God. Um, 
I, I know that you've promised me some things and I am not going to stop until you do it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the, the scripture says that God sent an angel. And uh, during that time, Jacob was wrestling with this angel and mm-hmm. basically busted his hip. <laughs> and at the end of the time when he's done, he broke his hip. Uh, he he oh, got he what he was asking for. That's it right. happened, right? It, it was a break. Right. All right, so here's the deal. Here's the deal with Jacob, bro. Ready for this one? Here comes Goosebumps, yeah. Goosebumps Central. When when Jacob wrestled with God, sorry, folks, this ain't no preaching, but this is really good. And I guess it is preaching. When Jacob wrestled with God and he broke his hip, guess what? He never walked the same again. Wow. Everything changed. Everything changed. So when you talk about Jacob and you're talking about your, your knee and wrestling and your knee broke to me, wow. I'm sitting here thinking, Rob, you, your <laughs> wife, never walked the same again. Never. Everything, everything changed, right? Everything changed. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's good, bro. That's good stuff. That's, so, folks, that's, what, that's what he was talking about when he was talking about Jacob. And, and of course, that's what he meant. All the things I just said too. He just meant that too. But you know, that's some, that's some freaking powerful stuff. Rob, so how, how is it possible that, say, somebody's watching us or listening to us right now in this, uh, in this episode of Hope Revealed, and they like what we're saying, but some of what we're saying is, it seems distant or unreachable, or yeah, that, that works for you, but I mean, if you could talk to that person, that man, that woman listening right now, what, what, what could you say to that person right now, Rob? And this person, a man or woman that's saying, you know, they're in a relationship and it's not going well or whatever the challenges are. And they're like, listen, that story you just said was cool, but that's not where I'm at. Right. That, talk about that person. Yeah. Yeah. So that person would have to ask themselves if they really want to be married. That's the first question. You got to get real. That's the first thing. Even if you go to um, uh, any type of um, uh, AA or or. or rehabilitation process is the first step is you know, getting out of the denial. Number one, okay, admit. What is the truth? And once you reveal the truth, now you can live in the truth. So if you do you want to be married? And if the answer is yes, and when you say yes, meaning do you want to love this person unconditionally? And if the answer is yes to that, then you must learn what that is. And the process of learning unconditional love is starting with what we just talked about self-reflect course correct through humility serving you know seeing instead of expecting whatever you're expecting serve give find out what you can do see if you can out give find out what your spouse or your partner loves right and give that to them find out what their love language is you can google that and see what that is because everybody has a love language some people like give some people like caring some you'll see it understand what you got because by doing that, by me understanding my wife's love, love language, you know, acts of service, you know, like, okay. And then understanding some of your other sub levels of her love language, which, like, okay, this. And I actually enjoy doing it. So I would say to the person, if you're really interested in bettering your marriage, then you have to learn how to unconditional love. You have to learn how to love unconditionally. You have to learn how to give. And, do, and you do that by starting there. Mm. That's good. Know, know where you're at and where you want to be. Yeah, that's the first step. And then the, mm-hmm. then I, I would think from what you said a, a, a little bit ago is that when you position yourself, that you place to place yourself in a position of humility, uh, that is to place yourself not like a flake, but like a rock, right? So mm-hmm. you, can mm-hmm. be, you can be something that's ground level. And to me, ground level means you're grounded, rooted, like you said earlier. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then at that place, when you're mm-hmm. rooted, when you're ground, when you're grounded, the Bible even talks about like there's trees that were planted by the by the side of this river that that were so strong, the roots were so strong, even though they're in weak soil, the trees were so rooted that wind, water, whatever come that wouldn't knock them down. Right, it's deeply wow. rooted. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah, you get yeah. to that place, then you you look up to be able to say, "I am here for you." Mm-hmm. And then everything else flows from that, right? Yeah. That's, that's what you're saying today as well? That's it. That's it, man. That's I couldn't, cool. couldn't say it like that, man, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> 
well, that's why we're doing the show together. We're we're we're, uh, we're a dynamic team here. So I mean, I think yeah, that, man. I think it's powerful, powerful stuff, Rob. And um, to be able to have a show that we could talk about specifically in the in the area of marriage and relationships. And I understand that could be a a different uh, definition for some folks, but we're talking about you know straight up relationship period you mm-hmm. can define it how you want but for us we're talking about us your your wife uh, and you my wife and me how we can better those relationships of course with our children mm-hmm. um you know i've got kids and and uh now they are uh 15 and and 12 and the 15 year old uh would be fine if i didn't exist on planet earth and uh the 12 year old uh oh. loves that i'm on this planet and wants to be with me all the time which is fantastic um, but anything that you say or do as dad or as mm-hmm. mom, uh, not only do they hear those things, you are programming your child to be you down the road. People say, oh, I ain't going to happen, right? The whole thing like, well, when I grow up, I'm never going to be like my mom or my dad. I'm never going to do it. My dad, I'm... watch. Oh, yeah. Epigenetics, watch. baby. Epigenetics. Yeah. And it comes back <laughs> down to what you're saying a bit ago. It comes down to mindset. Like because when, mm-hmm. when we're programmed with that kind of stuff, there's there's almost almost no way out unless you make a choice. Mm-hmm. Right? And that that one time for you specifically in many choices that you made over your life, but that one we're talking about today was a powerful choice for you that brought transformation and breakthrough into your yeah. marriage and your life to where now we can see you guys singing, smiling and having fun, goofing off at the house and, you know, just a blast, yeah. right? I remember a couple, yeah. couple of weeks ago you did something and y'all were singing and she was waiting for you to sing something and do something. And then this one part came up and you knew it was getting ready to be this like high note or whatever. You're like, hey, you did something. And she just started laughing because it was like, ah, I knew you were going to go there. It's just fun because <laughs> you guys were together. Right. And yeah. Uh, yeah. That ain't, that's worth more than, than a, a seven figure income, bro. Mm-hmm. Way Absolutely. More. Way oh more. yeah. So priceless, man. It is priceless. Like, 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 like that commercial, you know, it was that Mastercard. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, you, you know, you know a, a great job, two for two hundred k. You know, nice car, ninety k. You know, time on at Hawaii, you know, five k. You know, a great, a great marriage, priceless. <laughs> like Absolutely. priceless, man. <laughs> that's so good bro everybody thank you so much for being here with us today rob it's been so good and this episode uh, i surely hope will, will be used many times in people's lives because this is just a, a great fantastic message that we could share with the world that it's not all about just making money it's not all about trying to be popular and famous um, it's really about uh being that rock being grounded being able to look up and serve and when yeah. you do uh, you, it comes like, I always say this, you can never outgive God. Yeah. Givers get. Givers get. No way around it, bro. I like that. Yeah, man. Givers get, man. You can steal it. It's mine, but you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody else is going to have it too. That's all right. So, but it's so true. And folks, that's exactly what my friend Rob does. And uh, Rob, if people would like to get a hold of you and to talk to you about some things outside of uh, humanology or even humanology, or maybe they're interested in talking to you about uh, and maybe their marriage, maybe coaching, maybe something yeah. that you that you offer to folks. How do people get a hold of you? So LinkedIn is a great great route, but I'm also the number one Rob House on Google, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, yep, me and a brother from Atlanta. Me and him. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, his name is Robert House. You know, that's awesome. Rob so yeah, I'm, I'm the number one Rob House on Google, man. Stay Dude, you're the, you're the number around. one, bro. <laughs> You've been working hard on that your whole life. Ain't nobody like you. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so it's LinkedIn or, or they can click Google and they can find you yeah. through that way. Yeah, because because honestly, through Google, they'll be able to see a, a bunch of different things. I have the kids empowerment program, the TV show, my, my website, the music. I got an out. Al- oh, here's big. On Christmas Day, I'm, drop, I'm dropping an album. How about that? Happiness is mandatory project. That is going to come in on Christmas Day, and there will be a Christmas right. song in there with my wife and I, too. Yeah. Oh, with you and yeah. your wife. Here we go. Yeah. Bonus round. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Well, we'll make sure we, uh, we include that information so people know uh, to watch for that as well. Thanks again, yep. Rob. Cool, I man. really appreciate you being here today. You're such Thanks, an amazing man. man. And I, I just say, honestly, I mean, I love you and I appreciate what you do. And we're both pretty busy and 
once in a while we get a chance to say, Hey, Rob, that was awesome. Good stuff. Hey, Matt, love you, brother, too. But it's nice yeah. to be able to stick a chat chat with each other and see each other and to, to really catch up what's happening in our lives and what we can do for other people. So thanks for Absolutely, being here Absolutely, man. Yep. Matt, thank you, man. Appreciate you, brother. My pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Hope Revealed. We'll see you every Tuesday right here.